Maternity leave may have kept Meghan Markle from the Trumpian festivities in London this week, but her absence was a presence in itself. Goaded by a reminder that in 2016, the not yet Duchess of Sussex had called him divisive and misogynistic, Donald Trump lashed back in an interview given just before his visit, deriding Meghan as nasty. This fueled days of speculation about whether Meghan was actively avoiding Trump, rather than simply at home bonding with Archie. Still on maternity leave, Meghan was never scheduled to attend any of the state visit events. Whatever her feelings, Meghan has a symbolic relationship to Trump, and one that helps explain his rise to power. Both Meghan and Trump mentioned their followers with a classic princess narrative, a Cinderella story of magical, deeply American transformation. Despite his macho posturing, Trump actually relies on the fairy tale appeal of the romantic savior, Someday my prince will come, while revealing that narrative's curious resemblance to the lure of another all-American myth, the get-rich-quick scheme. Many of the same motifs run through Meghan's life and career albeit minus the chilling consequences. We all know this story, a lovely young woman of modest background captivates a prince about whom we know little, save that he is wealthy and powerful. Upon marrying the girl, the prince elevates her instantly to royal status, relieves her suffering, and sweeps her off to a life of privilege. This story is woven deeply into America's cultural DNA, and recurs constantly in both reality and fiction, from Grace Kelly marrying Prince Rainier to Carrie marrying Big. Meghan's love story with Prince Harry though she was somewhat famous and successful already clearly conforms to this plotline, which is one reason fashion magazines and talk shows go wild chronicling the Duchess's every yoga move, wardrobe choice, and preference in moisturizer. But Trump offered America a very similar fantasy. In his version, he plays Prince Un Charming, and we sit Eisen's our Cinderella. Before Trump's presidential run, most of the country knew little about him, except that he was wealthy and powerful, ruled some kind of dynastic empire, complete with a made-up heraldic crest, and lived in a gilded castle. And he wooed us like a swain, promising that, if we accepted his hand in presidency, we'd magically acquire some of his privilege. At campaign rallies, Trump even relied on such Disney-fied rhetoric as, you have one day to make every dream you've ever dreamed for your country and your family come true. This approach seduced a significant portion of the country to cast their lot with Trump, and proves how powerful the Cinderella myth remains for men as well as women. The very American fantasies of making it big, winning the lottery, succeeding in business without really trying all hue surprisingly closely to the princess narrative, a storyline usually dismissed as relevant only to women, and sidelined to chiclet. The Cinderella story fuels much more than we usually notice. And in a strange congruence, Meghan has had a role in perpetuating it in pop culture. Before Harry, before Suits, before even the airplane cameo in A Lot Like Love, a young Meghan took part in another princess narrative-driven Phenom, the game show with the distinctly Trumpian name, Deal or No Deal. On that show, Meghan was one of several dozen models, all wearing identical, skin-bearing outfits, who stood on a staircase holding briefcases containing different amounts of money, from one penny to one million dollars. Contestants would choose one lock case, and then go through a suspenseful process of trying to determine whether they had one containing lots of money. Along the way, they'd be offered trade-off deals lower amounts of cash in exchange for quitting the game. The goal was to make the best deal and keep from losing everything. In one sense, deal or no deal was a simple game of percentages, since the number of cases and the amounts were known in advance. But what made the show interesting was the seduction factor the degree to which even the remotest hope of becoming a millionaire led people to foolish on-air behavior and risky choices. The show played into the fantasy of magical transformation, the dream of acceding instantly to wealth through a single, fateful transaction which just happened to involve a pretty, young woman handing you a briefcase of money. These are all recognizable, key components of the Cinderella story, if slightly rearranged. Deal or No Deal went off the air 10 years ago, but returned in December 2018 with the same host, Howie Mandel, and the same staircase of models rocking sex spot dresses and stilettos. This comeback may well have been an attempt to capitalize on the show's connection to Meghan who, having become a real princess in 2018, casts a retroactive royal aura over even Howie. 
She also symbolizes a kind of ultimate game show success, having clearly picked a winning briefcase in Harry. And surely producers also considered the show's resonance in the era of Trump, whose own claim to fame was his purported genius for deals, a skill he advertised on his own game show-inspired reality series, The Apprentice. Perhaps the real comeback version of Deal or No Deal is the Trump presidency itself. Like the television game show, this presidency claims to be about careful deal negotiations over trade, North Korea, healthcare, etc., but is really peddling a spectacle of greed embellished and made more palatable by impeccably groomed women Melania, Ivanka, Omarosa Manigault Newman, and Hope Hicks, who wouldn't look out of place on the Deal or No Deal staircase. The notable absence this week of the Duchess of Sussex actually gave us the space to contemplate Meghan more fully, and to reflect on the curious way she illuminates the Trump presidency. As an American, former game show model, star of a television serial drama, and real-life Cinderella, Meghan Markle embodies a more authentic, and certainly less terrifying, version of everything Trump claims to promote. But Meghan never confused fiction with reality. And while pop culture revels in her glamour, she is not using it to grift. Instead Meghan actually helps reveal the devices that build Trump world. Regardless of its intent, her absence from the proceedings this week denied Trump even the implied spectacle of her approval, and withheld any visual evidence that Americans can become royal. An actress can become a princess. But a president isn't a king. No deal.